We want to focus and we want to stay focused, okay? Okay. What are you doing, puppy? That's my spot. That's my spot. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, there's people outside. Big deal. Do you have to, like, rule the entire world? Do you have to, like, micromanage every single little thing outside of the van? Why don't you go down on the ground? How about that? Yeah, dogs in a van. Um, I was like, what's going on in your head, doggy? How does your head work? And I'm, I think what, what the deal with dogs, with my dog, is they have to just be the boss all the time, if, if at all possible. That's really what their first, their first goal is to just dominate their entire landscape, kill things, chase things, bark at things, and just like totally dominate the landscape. Just like people do. It's, it's pretty much. He's got a little bump on his butt. What is that? Oh, that's just the way his hair grows. It's just every, all the hairs grow out in every direction from that spot. Well, um, I'm up here in Asheville and it's beautiful weather. There's this summer has been incredibly hot down in Florida where I'm from and also all the way up to the top of the United States. It's been hot as everyone is well aware of now. Are you going to whimper and whine? Are you going to whimper? Do you want to whimper into the microphone? And I have gotten a dog recently. That's Koa. He's a little black dog and it's dark in here, so you might not be able to see him. But um, we're going to eat some raisins right now. Oh, he likes, I'm surprised that he liked raisins. Here, there's your raisins. They're down there. <laughs> but I'm in good spirits tonight, whereas it's been a lot of ups and downs um, living in the van. First of all, this summer, being so hot, I couldn't really be in the van most of the time. So I lost my dad this year. I went down from Asheville to St. Pete in my van to do all that stuff. And I was blessed with a lot of people helping me out with, um, you know, money to be able to get back on the road. And then it ended up being so hot. This is all a bunch of personal stuff, but it's kind of hard to avoid. But anyway, I did a few things with the van, made it a little bit better, whatever, five, over 500 watts of power on the roof. Um... You know, two big batteries, LIFO batteries, even an air conditioner unit. I, just while we're on the subject, I have a Dometic-style refrigerator. It's a Chinese Chinese cheap thing, but pretty big. Works good. And I do have a diesel parking heater that works good. I used it in Taos, New Mexico, which is a high elevation, like a ski village in North New Mexico, right on the border of Colorado. Oh, you want some more raisins here? You like these? You have to hey, get out of the box. So the dog always wants to have like whatever I have, and if I give him a piece of it, he sniffs the <laughs> the part that I don't give him to make sure that I'm giving him what I am having. So he's a little asshole, right? He's a <laughs> 24-7. I've been around this dog since I've had him. 24-7. Um, I've been sleeping in a hammock in the studio that I'm renting. And there was a drive-by shooting right here where I'm parked. Like nine rounds or something like that. And they went down the road. Nine more rounds. Something like that. And uh, ever since that night, that was several weeks ago. I decided to sleep in my studio that I was renting. You know, being up here in Asheville. Oh, so this is the first night that I've been in my van at night. Period. Because ever since that night, I kind of just started whole whole hog into the studio. 
So the studio is not a very private space. It's it's in a larger room with other artists, and the walls don't go all the way up. You have a door. You can lock your door, and that's about it. But it's pretty cool. And there's free Wi-Fi, and there's a refrigerator and a sink with hot water, but there's no bathroom. The bathroom's two floors up, basically two flights of stairs up. So it's not nice for that reason. It's not very convenient. It's kind of like a glorified storage unit. I've been in there. I'm sleeping in there every night in a hammock. In fact, I was in there sleeping one night, and another guy was in there working on his computer the entire night, like until like 7 a.m. He was up the whole night, which I was great with that. I'm fine with that. It was cool. So anyways... I'm going to try to keep this condensed. I go like 20 minutes usually because I don't do videos very often. Um, so today I was feeling super tired and depressed. <laughs> you know, the dog gets me up early in the morning. I got a lot on my mind. I, I pull these music production um, marathons, you know, in my studio uh, running up and down the stairs. I'm not used to that. It's just not my thing to walk the dog, you know, three or four times a day, usually four times a day. And, uh, yeah, so I've got a lot of anxieties. It's just my nature, social anxiety. I I'm paranoid when I'm paranoid that people are thinking about me and thinking bad things about me all the time. And that <clears throat> I'm out of line somehow. And like, I'm, you know, breaking the rules. Somehow that doesn't bother me when I'm in the van because the stakes aren't as high. But when I'm renting a place, like a house, for example, is one thing. I was renting a house. And the city came down on me because they didn't like the way I was keeping my yard. You know, I was building structures and stuff like that for storage and shade <coughs> and for my garden. And that's one of the main reasons I left living in that house with a yard was because I was like, this is, I can't do what I want. This is not, I don't have my, I don't have freedom here. I can't even do the basic things I need. Like I needed, the house needed more shade. It was an old house. It didn't have good insulation or central AC or anything, you know? Um, I needed more storage because the house didn't have, a lot of storage in it. I had a nice big yard, so I used that space. But the city code enforcement came down. Which was super rude. But whatever. So I just decided to just, just leave that situation. Lived on sailboats. And then after the sailboats, this van. Lived in this van. And I traveled. I had a little bit of money for gas at one point. I forget exactly where all that money came from. I think it was because I'm in an Irish band back home and we do all of our gigs in March and we make a few thousand dollars or so. And a lot of times I'll plan my travels after that to go all my big travels around the United States in the van and stuff. So like that was when I went to Taos, <coughs> I've done a few of the whole United States sort of trips more or less not major ones dog is basically sniffing my entire crotch and licking what are you doing let me just give him some more raisins <coughs> i did i'm not sick but that reminds me i just got over the flu and that was just devastating you know on top of depression manic depression having the flu that means now you can't channel your mania and work on your art. And so totally depressing, horrible, you know, having the flu and being alone in the studio with no windows and just dreading having to go up and down the stairs for the dog. But somehow we made it through that. <coughs> and then I, I don't, I've been trying to make money here and um, I was doing busking and 
that was just rough. It was very rough because you can't like half of the days you go out to bus, something happens like the weather messes up or, or there's construction where you're going to go or, or there's a, there's a noisy thing going on and you can't, and you can't do it. Dog, do you want more raisins? Let's try that. <laughs> All right. I've got like 10,000 raisins right here. So it's a good cheap dog treat. <laughs> so anyways, I'm really, I'm not going to get into everything, but I mentioned the depression. I mentioned, you know, fatigue and all this kind of stuff. Honestly, I'm only surviving by people sending me money. Like my poor mom, you know, and she just lost her husband, my dad. And we don't have a lot of money, but I have other friends that have been donating $20, $100, <coughs> $500 sometimes. And it's just barely enough for me to have food and pay rent on this studio. But just between me and you, I'm going to almost definitely move out of that studio and just go right back into the whole van thing. And I miss it. <clears throat> and really the only reason why I went into the studio was because it was just too hot. I'm really heat intolerant. But when it's nice like this in the 60s, I'm super happy. I'm comfortable. You know, I'm, I feel a activated and energized. I feel good. <clears throat> but my whole mood surrounds, is surrounded around the weather. I don't know if it's the Native American in me or some kind of primal connection to the, to the earth or living on sailboats so long. I'm happiest when I'm outside and dealing with the weather, but the hot weather, I just cannot handle it. So <clears throat> I've got like raisins stuck in my throat now good time to take some orange juice excuse me so I'm like the opposite of a lot of people maybe like I don't get scared walking in the woods at night I don't get scared walking in the park at night there was a drive-by shooting here. I wasn't really scared, but I did leave. I had this sense. I was like, this is a situation where there's unusual um, danger going on. That's act an actual thing is happening. And, you know, after that happened, I was like, that's a good reason for me to just go and barricade in the studio every night and just stay in there and um so this is nice though this is my first time getting back out and coming back to this premium little spot and really i've been struggling with my mental health because i have wanted to connect with people in town and i just haven't and a big reason for that is because i have the dog and I just can't bring myself to, like, leaving this little guy anywhere. Like, even in the van is the best place to leave him. Because he recognizes it as his space, as his home. He's used to it. And I've got my things in here, so, you know, he feels safe. He smells the right smells and everything. Yeah, he's being a good boy right now. He's a really good dog. So, he helps me because... He, he does get people interested in my life, you know, just strangers and whatever. But, you know, so does music. You know, it's like, if I just play music, I would connect with the right people. And so, this is a real challenge. As if I needed any more challenges right now. But I got the dog because I wanted... I wanted to take care of this dog when I met it. He's like a, um, <laughs> a rescue sort of situation. 
and he seems to get along with me. He likes me. He kind of chose me at the same time, but he's nice. He would, he would get along with just about anybody. So I got my fridge here. We, we went out this morning and went to the grocery store and I was just exhausted. And I took that spark of energy that you have in the morning after you've had a good sleep. I didn't sleep as much as I'd like to because he gets me up so early at sunrise every morning. And I cleaned up the van and I took, it was a mess. It was as messy as you could imagine after just not living in it and using it just to throw things around. The nice thing right now is a lot of my stuff is up in my studio. So the van is very empty and open and it would be nice if I could keep it that way. <laughs> but I'm going to have to pile up, pile some stuff in here, but I know how to put it in certain totes and boxes where it's not a big deal. I do have a lot of stuff. You know, like 10 violins, four guitars, banjo, keyboard, of course, my computer stuff, my camera stuff, my lighting stuff, and who knows what else. I tried not to bring, like, for example, I didn't bring a guitar amp. I tried to be practical. So anyways, blah, blah, blah. Here we are, and it's finally cool enough to, to get back to the van stuff. I really like the van life when it's cool. Um, let's think back to this high elevation in Taos that I was talking about. I was there in the winter, so it got down to extremely low temperatures um, in the single digits. And at that time, I didn't have a heater in my van at all. And I was sleeping in the van. Sometimes I was sleeping in a friend's house. But actually friend's house was cold too it was like colder in the friend's house than in the van it seemed like you know they didn't really use their heat <laughs> but um they had a fireplace so it was it was cool adobe you know <clears throat> as it as it, as they have in new mexico but eventually i got this diesel heater and uh it's not hooked up right now but it works and it'll just run all night and just keep the, keep the place, you know, 50 degrees or whatever, which is really comfortable in the dead of winter. So that was like a game changer. But when I got the heater, I didn't have the right batteries or solar. I've got like five times as much or more um, solar and battery capacity than I had when I was trying to use this, this heater because you got to run... It runs off diesel, but it also has a lot of stuff that runs off the battery that it requires as well, like the glow plug and the pump and the fan, you know, and so those things to, all together, I don't know, they, they take up a, like 100 watts or and down to like maybe 20 watts, maybe even less once it once it gets going on its own when you just keep it on low. Oh, so I feel like I've pretty much told you my life story here. Um, so if I move out of the the um, studio, I'll move back into the van, which I'm really wanting to do because I'm so much happier in the van now that it's cooler because I can just go places and I can be on the move and I can be doing things and going where the stuff is happening instead of just sitting in the studio waiting for things to happen to me, which they never will. It's not what my life is about. It's not what this life is about. It's not why I got a van, you know. And I think it works better for the puppy too when we're in the van because in the studio, it's just boring for him. There's nothing. There's nowhere to walk around. I mean, he's not. He's got space, but and he plays with his toys. I'll, I'll bring in like chunks of wood for him to play with and to chew on. Hello. He's being really sweet right now. I think he's so happy. He really is happy because he, he wasn't able to lay like next to me. I always was in the hammock and he would just be all by himself like on the floor and just un uncomfortable and he would just move spots and he would try to lay where he could touch, be touching me in the hammock right under the hammock. 
So that's how sweet he is. He's a good boy. And um, now he's just so happy. I think he's really happy to be here. Okay, so my phone just died. I should have plugged it in. That was not smart of me. Um, long, long video. Um, so I got my little lights plugged into one of my big batteries down there. I have two different completely separate power stations, each with a 100 amp hour LifePo battery. So that's kind of cool because I can have one and not only is it the battery itself, but also a sine wave inverter. So I have one at the front of the van, which is where I am, and I have one at the back of the van. The one at the back of the van runs my fridge, um, my little, my, my room, the fan, the evacuation fan, and whatever I want to plug into it back there. I could plug my computer into that one, because that's where my desk would probably be. And then this one up front can be whatever. Um, so I plug these USB lights in and I can plug my phone in very easily up here. And uh, it's nice because this battery up front is completely portable. The The inverter is, is like taped to the battery, like, you know, VHB tape to the battery. And I can just, the battery's got a little handle on it and it's a lightweight lithium battery and I can carry it around. I can use it to power my busking station.